Hello everyone and welcome to this 14th coding challenge video. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be using a script to gather all the Adobe Media Encoder presets built into my computer that I've created in various versions of Media Encoder. And with this, I'll be able to gather everything, which I can then later use to render out specific presets based on the Media Encoder presets that I've read. So we're going to basically be going through the different folders that Media Encoder stores stuff in, and we're going to read all the data from there to get all those presets. Before we get started with this video, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can check us out on GitHub where I will be posting this code when this is all finished. You can follow us there for coding updates as well as in the description, follow us on Instagram for other live updates. And if you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get up with scripting, extensions, plugins, UXP plugins, hang out with some of our awesome members and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube and become a channel member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, you can do so in the description down below. And you can also check out the links to Adobe Exchange, uh, AE Scripts, and Gumroad to check out some of the other stuff that I work on. All right, so if you didn't already know, inside of your documents and Adobe folder, you have Adobe Media Encoder stored in here, all the versions you have, and it also has all of the EPR presets that you might have created. These EPR presets contain all of the data for different types of export presets in Media Encoder. The goal today is going to be to read these multiple versions of Media Encoder I might have, gather all of the presets, and then I will have access to these later if I wanted to then in inject them into another script to render a specific format or codec out of Media Encoder. So I already have this uh, folder set up here called load uh, AME presets. I'll create a new JSX file, which we'll just call uh, load AME presets.jsx and this is just going to load our media encoder presets. We're going to have a UI for this and I think we could make this a dynamic UI. The tricky part is going to be uh, reading in all of these preset folders. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a window. It's going to be a new window, a palette type window. The name is going to be load AME and undefined we'll set the orientation of the window to be a column and i think from here we can just kind of make it dynamic um we're just going to make a group for each one of the versions of media encoder we find so we can have uh, you know cc 2021 as one group and then cc 22 as another group because there are different presets for each of them so the way we're going to do this we first need to reference our actual media encoder folder. Luckily, it's in a public space and the documents is both on Windows and Mac. So we can actually refer to the, the location directly. I can actually before my UI, create a variable called AME folder. And this is going to be equal to a folder. And the location is going to be in my documents, Adobe. And I'll actually go ahead and zoom in just a little bit so you can see better here. And it's in a documents, Adobe, Adobe media encoder. So we can go ahead and put that path in ourselves. And here we have our media encoder folder. Now we know that there are going to be subfolders within here. Each of these subfolders representing a different version. Uh, 22 is obviously CC 2022. And that's because they updated all the versions of Adobe programs to version 22 for the CC 22 update. So we know that this one is also the version before it. And we can gather the information from that. So just to quickly draw this up in my wonderful handwriting, um, we're going to have our script here. You know, we have our X button and we're basically going to want for each version, we could have I equals zero and then I equals one. We're going to want a, like a version text. So like AME version 22. Maybe we have AME version 15. And then we're going to have a drop down with all of the presets for each of these. So this way we can have a somewhat simple but also organized way to see all of the presets for each of the versions. We're going to have each little group here be a version of media encoder that we read in. And then there's these drop downs are what are going to be contained the actual EPR or uh, preset files. So in order to do that, we're first going to read through all of these folders here. In order to do that, we're going to say 
uh, version folders is equal to AME folder git files. We're going to assume that all of these files here are going to indeed be um, folders. So we're, this is going to return us with 15.0 and 22.0. For each of the version folders, we're going to create a new group. So we can say for, this is of course below our window, if our i is equal to zero, i is less than our version folders dot length, increment i by one. And for each time through here, we need to create a new group. So let's create a group variable outside of here. And we'll also need a version text variable. And we also had a drop down we need to have as well. So we'll just say dd. For this, we're going to say group is equal to our window. We're going to add a new group, undefined size, and no name. And then inside of this group, we need to first add an orientation, which is going to be a row. And then we need our version text and our drop down with all of our presets. So we're going to say version text is equal to our group, we're going to add some static text. And the contents of this static text is going to be our version folders, I dot name. This means that if we have say 15.0, that's going to be what it displays. Um, we're going to have some text before that we're going to say AME version. And then we'll add that as well. And this should be version folders, not versions folders. So each time through, it's going to create a new group, create this new static text telling us which version of uh, AME we're looking at. And then we're going to have a, our DD, which is going to be equal to our group. We're going to add a drop down list, undefined size. And then let's say get these presets. And we're going to feed this our version folders I. Now we'll need to, of course, create this function called get these presets. And we're passing in a version folder. So inside of here, we're giving it either this 15.0 folder, which contains all this, or we're giving it this 22.0 folder, which contains all that. Inside of each of these version folders, there's a presets folder, which contains everything we need. So inside of get these presets, we need to go into this folder, grab the presets, and then grab all these files and sort them by .epr. So we're going to say var temp files is equal to our version folder .get files. And I'm going to loop through all of these temp files until I find a variable which I'm going to call our preset folder. So I'm going to say var t or I can say f for files. f is equal to 0. And for f is less than our temp files dot length f plus plus, we're going to say if our temp files dot name is equal to presets, and this needs to be temp files f. If its name is presets with a capital P, our preset folder is going to be equal to our temp files f. All right. So now we have this temp uh, or sorry, this presets folder containing all of this. So we're just going to say are are all files. Now there's kind of two things we can do here. When we populate UIs with drop down data, you don't want to necessarily give it like the whole path of the file. You want to give it something visually friendly, like the name of the file. We're not going to want to display. Oh, this uh, this particular preset thumb here is located in this long path. We're just going to want to give it the name. But there may be somewhere else we want to store the full path if we want to use these later. So we're going to have a variable called all files, all file names. The names are going to be what are displayed in the actual interface. The files we could use later if we want to actually apply this uh, render preset. So to get all of the file names, we're going to first need more temp files. I'm going to set our temp files variable equal to our preset folder dot get files. This is going to get all of the files within our current preset folder. And now we just need to filter out the ones that are not EPR files. So we're going to loop through temp files. 
let's say var f is equal to zero, f is less than temp files dot length, increment f by one. And we're going to say if our temp files f, the current file we're looking at, we're going to look at the fs name, which contains the whole path as well as the name of the file and the extension. We're going to check if that contains dot epr. And if the index of dot epr is equal to negative one, which means it's actually located that, we're going to want to say all files dot push, all file names dot push as well. And it looks like we have an error here. We need to put if. And we're going to push in our all files, temp files f, and in the all files name, the name of that. So now this should auto generate a group for each of those versions it finds. To test this, we need to firstly say uh, window.center. And it's going to auto correct me. And window.show. Now we can go ahead and make sure we have After Effects open and we'll hit launch in After Effects. And as you can see, we now have, we have two versions here. We have AME version 15.0 and we have AME version 22.0. But I seem to have issues selecting the dropdowns as well as viewing any values inside of the drop downs. So let's investigate why this might be. We actually first may need to set the DD selection to zero. Actually, so get these presets is returning an array, we need to actually return this array. All file names needs to be returned. So that can be filled inside of the drop down. Then we also need to say DD dot selection, we're going to select the first thing. Now let's go ahead and run this again in After Effects. And now you can see we have our AME 15.0 and our AME 22.0 presets. All the names have this percent to zero, which is something that's actually quite easy to fix. Um, when we push in our all file names, we're going to replace uh, slash percent sign to zero globally with an empty space. Um, it's kind of like the encoded URI formatting of a space. Um, if you wanted like a space in a URL format or URI, this is how you would do it. And we're just going to replace that because it's a very common thing that occurs. And now with the relaunch, you can see our file names are looking good and all of this. So one more thing we can do is make these, these drop downs are kind of offset off each other. They need to be the same size as well as the AME text. So we're going to say version text dot size, and let's make it maybe 75 by 25. And then for our drop downs, we're going to need these to be a little bit long. Let's go ahead and measure the current length, roughly around 200 pixels. So we'll say DD dot size is equal to 200 by 25. And I'm trying to think, is there anything else we might want to do here? Remember that we are storing the actual files here themselves, because in the future, we may want to go back and actually apply these to an actual render. So the data for that is existing, we could make it global, we could keep it within the get these presets. Um, or there's lots of other ways we could store it, we could store it locally. Um, but if you wanted to as well, you could say, instead of returning all file names, we could return all files. And if we wanted to, we could get the FS name, do the same replacement method because we're going to have lots of spaces in our file paths. But what this is going to do is going to give us in the drop downs the entire path to our files. So if you want to use that data to actually apply those later, you could do that as well and hide this information somewhere else or just use the file names. But that's actually going to do it for this 14th coding challenge. I just wanted to kind of do an automated way to go through and check out all of the presets I have installed for all of my media encoder versions and load them up in a script, which I could then use in After Effects or Premiere, send jobs and customize everything to my heart's content. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code, which I am now going to 
upload to GitHub, and you can check out the link to try this out for yourself, make modifications and whatever else you might need to do. And also check out the link below to check out our Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join to get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, submit tutorial ideas, hang out with some of our knowledgeable members, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can do so by becoming a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. Link for that is in the description down below. And you can also check out the links to AE Scripts, Gumroad, and Adobe Exchange to check out some of the other cool stuff that I make. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.